Hi, everyone. Welcome to live homebrew at regular speed, one second per second instead of three times speed. This is an exciting, strange thing to be doing. And I can't believe there's actually people watching this. That's right, Ian Miller, it's happening. Can you believe it? Well, I don't really have much plan other than to go through my stout. I'm going to try and pick out all the flavours. I've got replacement porter for the one that was um, tipped, sadly. Did you enjoy my singing? Atlanta, Georgia. Hello, Georgia Stout. Georgia, I get it. <laughs> Very clever. I can't believe people are watching from all over the world. That's uh, kind of, I don't know. I started this channel because I got sick of watching really slow, boring stuff, and I thought you can get through this a lot faster. And I started with some like tutorial videos, but now it's more of a blog than anything. But anyway, my special stout glass. Here's my stout. And, oh, we've got a local, Louie Nathan. Hello, from Adelaide. And from New Zealand. So is anyone, like, fully locked down at the moment? It's actually not so bad where I am. You can still go around and do most of the stuff. It's just people are thinking, 3.30 in London, crikey. What else are you saying? Adelaide, New Zealand, top of the evening. <laughs> I don't know if that means you're an Irishman. Anyway, let's get into the stout. I've got my list of ingredients that it's, oh, flavors it's supposed to have. So there's, it's an oak imperial milk oyster, smoked wheat, vanilla chocolate, licorice, oat milk, coffee stout. They're my everything stout. Nothing enforced in, Min is that Minnesota? I got a heaps professional setup, by the way. You're just hearing me through laptop speaker and the laptop's balanced on a high chair and I've got all this random stuff scattered around me to try and stop Max from knocking everything over. I don't know if he's... Is he in? No, oh, he's up there at the moment. Anyway, here we go with business. This is the everything stout. Yes. And it has clicked over 12 o'clock, so it is legal for me to be drinking now. All right, so this is quite dark, as you would expect. I'll try and shine my little light through it, shall I? Did I have my black light? That would have been sensible. Can you see? Uh, it's not really showing anything. There's not, like, no light coming through it. But it is quite dark. You can see at the bottom where it's thin that it's kind of got a ruby thing going on there. Let me catch up on these comments. Two thumbs. <laughs> yeah, that's a good guess. Uh, yep, good thumbs. All right, so the first flavor on the list is oak. Does this have oak? Oh, now you see what my face looks like. I think that a lot of people when they saw the oysters going in were sort of expecting it to be just rubbish. But um, it's really confusing. It's hard to get any particular flavors. And, oh, well, I, I know I like in this. I can't tell if there's oak in this. It's too muddled with everything else that's going all right, next flavor is Imperial, um, which I don't know if there's an actual flavor. I think that just means it's really strong. And that first little sip has gone straight to my head. So I can tell that Imperial has worked. So that's how many we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, plus one. So why not? <laughs> I probably wouldn't be going live if it wasn't for this whole disease nonsense. But. Ah, there's Max. Max has got a new friend. The neighbours have a puppy, so um, how sweet it was. Just a second. Uh, derisive laughter. <laughs> how sweet is it? Well, that's the milk part. It's... It's... Yeah, it's not... It's got, like, a smooth 
bitterness to it. So maybe lactose has kind of rounded it off. I've never used lactose before, so I don't really know how it affects it, but um, it's I don't know much of what I'm talking about. So um, I'm going to say, though, it is a fairly sweet stout. It certainly hasn't got those real roasty flavors going on. So maybe, uh, yeah, oh, well. Can we taste oysters in this thing? Hey, Gavin Bucket. I would say that, oh, I don't know the final gravity, sorry. Um, it, I often don't measure that. <laughs> There's only a small batch too, so I tend to just um, play one, two, three. Hopefully it's been in there long enough. Hopefully it doesn't explode. Um, what was I talking about? Oysters. There's a weirdness to it, almost a sliminess, which is what makes me say it's not awful. Um, you couldn't drink a lot of these, and I've got at least a few more to go in the back. <laughs> but I think that's what the oyster's bringing. So I'm going to say, yeah, oyster am I doing? Other oyster stouts in the past. Okay, smoke malt. It, it's not smoky. I'm going to say it's, it's not a smoky one. Oh, well. So I've done something on my notes here that has split them apart but uh so what have we got i said yes to imperial yeah wait in here i mostly put the weight in for head retention and it's it's doing a decent job for fairly um <laughs> fairly high alcohol beer it's holding it a, a nice it doesn't taste weighty so maybe half a point for the weight maybe not i shouldn't be too generous uh, Next is okay. Ah, vanilla. This is this is a vanilla stout. This is what this really is because that bean. I was. Max does not want to give me his ball. But I'm not tasting chocolatey. Maybe a tiny bit. Maybe a tiny bit. I say. Ah, uh, it's licorice. You know what? Along with the vanilla, I would say there's a decent amount of licorice taste on here. Yeah, so that's a definite. Yes. Is licorice stout a thing? I think it's a thing, isn't it? People often, yeah. Stream keeps coming out. Okay. If anyone knows, look that one back. If anyone knows how I can bump down resolution using this thing, I've never done this before. Please let me know and I'll see what I can do. I'm sorry that it keeps cutting out. Um, as I said, I don't have great um, upload bandwidth. All right. Oatmeal. Oatmeal. It's such a confusing beer, I can't tell what's in it. The thing behind it is that boil as well, which is good. But yeah. Cheers from South Carolina. So, what's SoCal, Jeff Nash? South Caledonia? I don't know. Move to a real city, says some. Flog, some flog. Move to a real city. Give Max a taste. No, I'm not giving Max this now. Actually, I've heard that the that here in Adelaide is not unlike South Carolina, but yeah. no, Southern California, whatever. No, coffee. Is there coffee flavour in this? Teeny tiny bit. So, out of my Oak Imperial Milk Oyster Smoke Wheat Vanilla Chocolate Licorice Oatmeal Coffee Stout, I have scored points for 
Imperial milk oyster, uh, vanilla chocolate, liquor, no, not chocolate, licorice coffee. So, in conclusion, my everything stout is an Imperial milk oyster, vanilla, licorice coffee stout. But, like, more than half vanilla stout, I would say. I reckon I'm going to brew this again. Base recipe. Uh, maybe I'll include some of the things like um, uh, lactose again, just because I've, I've got it and I may as well use it. But um, I reckon I'll brew the base recipe to see if that's any good anyway. I've never really made a stout that I don't move where you live is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Thank you. Uh, if you're streaming in the live control room or via stream, you only need to specify your resolution frame rate and bit rate in your encoder. YouTube will automatically detect the pandemic next time I'm sitting here having a beer with everyone. Do I brew wheat beers? Um, from time to time, but not very often. I've done a few. I made a honey wheat beer. That was okay. And I think I've tried a lemon one before, but... Once I made like a, what do you call it, dark wheat beer, and it tasted exactly, Dunkel Weizen? It tasted exactly like Dunkel Weizen. And then I was like, why did I make all this Dunkel Weizen? I don't even like Dunkel Weizen. But yeah. Brewing in the background is a porter that is basically a replacement for the one I made before. It's, oh, rye is a type of wheat. Well, there you go. I made, uh, the, well, there's a lot of rye in my Viking beer and rye in my golden ales. So there you go. Um, yeah, brewing in the background is the replacement for the porter that I tipped out the other day. Um, got a phone call from Andrea Bocelli after that. He was not, not happy. Oh, well, what can you do? Um, do I drink all my beer or give it away? I... Drink most of it. I like to share it as well with family and friends. Not Max. Max does not get the beer. Not the kids. <laughs> but um, I do enjoy sharing it. Some guy called Jason Lennon is asking what my favorite beer is. I don't know. Uh, I had so. I often grab that mismatch pale ale that I think I had in a, in a video where I compared hopping rates recently to some um, commercial examples. It's a it's an American style pale and it's just gorgeous. I say. I do have a day job. I mean, you would be surprised how much money YouTube makes. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Um, so people often ask me, you know, what does, what does one view get you? And the answer is a fraction of a cent. And my videos usually get around a thousand views. So it's, not, <laughs> it doesn't even cover the cost of the ingredients. Uh, but I just like doing it and it's fun and it's, it's part of the whole process for me. And, and I get people saying, um, Wow, you made it look so easy uh, after waiting for all the other nonsense and stuff that all the really detailed uh, people provide. And they provide a lot of good information. I'm not trying to say that there isn't a place for that. But for people getting started, they often say, you made it look easy, so I gave it a go, and I'm so glad, which makes me so happy. So, yay world. I'm glad that Rob likes my shirt. Um, Rob, if you can get here in 10 minutes, you can be on the video. As long as we keep 1.5 meters apart. I would love to use kegs, Ryan. My mate, Josh, who has been brewing for about five minutes. Remember him with his tiny little fermenter? He has now got a semi-professional setup. And I um, just need to get me more viewers. Well, that, that would be nice, but um, yeah. Tell us about yourself. Who are you? I am just a guy. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, I work for a, a private software company that makes custom software. Uh, what hobbies do I have besides beer? Riding my bike. Um, 
which is really good. I've got a good balance between drinking too much beer and burning it off on my bike. But I'm sure one day my liver or kidneys are going to fail and I'll be dead. You don't make YouTube videos for money or not brewing videos. That is true. Uh, so incredulous <laughs> and Donald Trump's response to the virus. I like to watch the American media. Wow, am I glad I'm living where I am, to be honest. Homebrew Network says, G'day, g'day, Homebrew Network. Uh, yay, software. Hello, Homebrew Network. What was the first beer I brewed? Um, it was, uh, when you get the Cooper's kit, it comes with a tin called an ale or a lager. And, uh, so I think it's like a, a, it's probably ale yeast because it's easier to control the temperature of an ale. It doesn't have to be quite so cold. Um, but that was the first thing I made. Of course, I brewed it too hot. It came out tasting like half beer, half cider. Um, hang on. Oh. That was some magnum going in just to bitter my porter. One hour. I'll probably cut this off in a few minutes because I'm sort of running out of things to say. I'm an American and our leadership is despicable. Uh, that's me reading, I'm not an American. Have I ever encountered... A, is, that, is that the um, infection? Hello? please that makes things sour i don't think um how is living in australia i imagine it's pretty nice i've never lived anywhere else and i don't have anything to compare it to no that that guy i don't know who jho is but the guy he's referring to is too skinny for my liking and doesn't drink beer so he can go more um more everything stout i think and yeah sorry about the politics But I'm doing this because of the virus and it's interesting to see the different responses around the world and the changes in policies like they had in the UK and the sort of um, the late responses, the early responses where I am actually doing really well in terms of testing and cases and really strong contact trace. So um, I don't know. I think everyone here is being pretty realistic about it and getting on with what they can. But Max. Good yeah. Which has been my favourite ESVA? 2016. 2016. Four days, you're good for the next few years, I would say. Am I a process control freak? No. Ideas for improving Cooper's Lager or Wheat Beer? grains and some hops and things and turn it into something that is hot or you could use it as what 1.7 kilograms you could use it as a weight to hold things down when you're outside um in case they blow away in, in the breeze so um I'm, I'm quite critical of that kit i think the reason keepers supply it and this is i'm just speculating but is that it's sort of very because it, it is very vanilla you know it's middle of the road and so it's a nice easy thing to get started and you know oh this beer tastes like beer So I think that's that's their reasoning behind that. Um, there are great kits as well, like the the English bitter is amazing, and oh, I get these evil flies. These often land in the kettle. That one's about to land on the max. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, yes, I can and have made cider videos. Thank you, Rob. Um, I feel like I've gone full journey all the way into all grains and then random nonsense like this. And I think I got appreciation at every step of the way rather than sort of going straight to the top. So I, I slowly learned bits and pieces. Um, I mean, fresh extract. Yeah. What beer would Rick drink from Rick and Morty? 
Oh. Isn't the latest season of Rick and Morty just great? There's one episode that opens where Morty's climbing a cliff and Rick's sitting there in a hover chair and, and he's drinking. <laughs> I can't remember the purpose behind it. And I love his toilet as well. But anyway, Rick and Morty is awesome. Uh, uh, easy to get going with. I have not felt the need to go full three-vessel wankery. Um I, I'd like to try it, but I'm not going to buy a, a bunch of extra stuff that I don't need. So, yeah, it is nice and easy doing Bruna Bang. Mm. Anyone from anywhere weird? I think I've had some from the UK, some from the US, uh, different states of Australia. Eh. Max, where's your ball? I've run out of things to say. Maybe I'll just sit here for a few minutes. Hmm. If you missed the rundown on the end, everything's out. I went through at the start of the video all the different flavors. Oh, I didn't guess what I don't know. I also hear that um, no chill was invented in Australia. People sometimes... Next. People sometimes ask me about this, which is my 25. Actually, this one's a brand new one. Um, when, when the work goes in here, it sort of goes in hot and sanitary, so you don't have to worry about infections. And you can let it cool down naturally over a couple of days. But, of course, it means you have to adjust your hop schedule because some bitterness is going to be happening in there because it's super hot and you're not cooling. Right. I can be the Australian beer drinking version of Ron Swanson. Who's the Australian non-beer drinking version of Ron Swanson? I hit the, I hit the roof. <laughs> uh, move slowly so the stream can keep up. Give us a tour of your beverages and what you currently have on the go. I can tell you what I have on the go is a Cooper's Extract uh, thing. It's a toucan, actually. They call it the Smoky Ale. I don't know. Someone tell me if you can hear me over Max. Good boy. Good boy. Um, I it just started raining, so I'm not going to take the laptop up to the shed. Sorry. We have the 2.5 gallon version of that. That's this. I assume is that. I don't know. Have I made a better bitter than the Cooper's bitter kit? No. But I think I figured out what's wrong with mine after having a fuller ZSB the other day. Uh, and I just don't put enough hops in at the end. Mine are too dry. It needs to be fruitier. So next time you can expect to see a large late addition when I do that. And now it's raining. Rob Swanson is from Parks and Recreation. Drank whiskey on YouTube for over 10 hours. <laughs> I don't know if I have the liver for that. Parks and Recreation is a good show. I haven't watched enough of it to really be able to comment. Every time I've seen it, you know, I've seen it a bit. Kind of like Seinfeld, which um, we saves a little bit of money each time. Good night, Georgia Scouts. Good night, Georgia. <laughs> Don't know if there'll be much more live streams. What have we got? 23 people watching, 30 likes. Favorite hop galaxy. I got a kilo of it and made all that galactica. Actually, I'm going to galaxy in the quarter later. Uh, because I have a lot, but um, we'll just see how that goes. Last time I used what was it? I used my leftover Bramling Cross, I think. Uh, and now I don't have any of that, so yeah, I've not used Falconer's Flight. It's a blend, is it really? I did not know that. So it's not a, it's not a single hop. It's when you say blend, what do you mean? 
Galaxy does rock. Galaxies are made of rocks and gas. Yeah. I'm going to have to look up more about Falcon and Spot. Are there any other types of hop like that? Mosaic, I, my next video. <laughs> Actually, I haven't done this yet. Uh, yeah, Andrew Pisson likes Mosaic Bison. Pisson? Mosaic. I don't know what CTZ means. Have a good day and night. Have a long weekend. Thank you, Mobius. Yep. Yep. Hello, Newton from Brazil. Wow. Very nice. How's how's um the whole situation in Brazil? I, I actually haven't heard. Do you have some do you have a fairly eccentric leader at the moment, let's say? Citrus Simcoe Sriracha Ace. Yeah. <laughs> when you're saying stream stuck for a while, was that because I put up my sign and ran to get this? Anyway, I highly recommend this. If you drink a lot of it, your poo smells like flowers the next morning. Ah, I have unintentionally brewed a stone and wood clone. Have a look at my dry hop experiment number four video. Um, it was so close. I reckon I would just swap out some stuff for a bit of wheat and it would be just like it. Ah, Centennial Tomahawk and Zeus. When am I going to ingress, invest in a grain mill? That's a good question. I'm cheap and my local store mills for me and um, I, I don't need one. I, you know, they mill it and then a couple of days later I brew it. So I don't think there's an issue with freshness there. Um, and also... I mean, it takes a while to mill, doesn't it? You gotta, you gotta prepare. I usually most prep. If I ever do any preparation, it is just to drag all this stuff out the night before. Sometimes. So that seems like hard work. Um, but sometimes I'd like to do it just for the sake of doing it. But then again, I guess it's the same as like having a. Oh, that's the neighbor's new puppy. It's a Kelby cross. Just coming out so hard at the max. Uh, see, quarantine was extended until five ten. I assume that's um, the tenth of May. I think we're quarantined until about the tenth of May as well, or something. It's another four weeks from this week. Um, as I said earlier, everyone's being kind of realistic about it, which is is good. I've noticed that there's kind of a, a shared anxiety in the community that's making everybody just a little bit friendlier in a way. You know, people, everyone has a tiny bit of fear in their eyes and it, and they're all just a little bit nice at the moment. Max, nice. come. Come here. Ah, oh, he's all right. Uh, yeah, so that's my grey meal and thingy thing. Definitely didn't see me move the sign and get that beer. Okay. Uh, hi, Pierre. Simple homebrew. That sounds like what I do. Just want to say my videos are always a pleasure to watch. Thank you very much. Uh, bought a can of the mismatch. Yeah. I know what you mean. Beer belly are awesome. Actually, a, a um, another company reached out. Excuse me a second. Okay. 
Um, okay. Um, Beer Belly are great. They've provided me with all sorts of uh, advice. And Amanda herself showed up the other day, late on a Sunday night, to hand deliver the thing that I bought. Another company uh, from New South Wales reached out to me the other day that seemed like a good bunch of people. Lazy Days with a whole bunch of Zeds brewing. Um, they want people to go on like their Facebook page. So maybe go there and give give them a like. Uh, uh, Ryan, you enjoy milling. 30 minutes by hand? You don't use a drill or anything? Yeah. Okay, so I guess it doesn't take that long. Swapping beers by post. <laughs> I'm worried that they would explode. Did, <laughs> did make, yeah. Well, you know, he's a boy dog and they mark their territory and, and that. And with the new dog next door, the fence smells a lot like we at the moment. <laughs> what can I say? How long have I been doing this for now? Oh, not that long. Ten pounds of rye. What on earth are you making? You're trying to kill yourself. You're trying to clog up your whole system so that you have to scrub it for a week afterwards. How about the delivery of those computer speakers? Yeah, well, that, <laughs> thanks, um, Blake, for that question. I was really impressed with Officeworks recently for delivering some computer speakers within 25 hours of me ordering them despite all the nonsense that's going on in the world right now. <laughs> so when you say hand milling, Ryan, are you like actually cranking something? Uh, oh, any interest in swapping beers? You post them a fair bit. So where are you from, Mick? Today, Gavin and I am brewing a porter to replace that other porter. If that got tipped. Br batch, batch number 100. 162, my first infected batch. I people say I ought to be proud of the fact I'm not happy to have tipped one, but it, it is pretty good knowing that I got through 162 without having an infection. <laughs> and number 163 survived. So whatever I did to clean a bunch of my gear afterwards, and that was an expensive one. I, you know, it's an IPA, so I put 20 or 30 bucks worth of hops in at the end and just crossed my fingers. And yeah, it's, it's come out okay. Hand cranking, crikey. Biggest homebrew disaster, Jason, was when I, I dropped the bag. So I've got a pulley up here. This is my pulley. This is my pulley. Oh, you can't quite see it. And it, it came undone with a bag like this that went splat. But when I say a bag like that, it was, um, I was brewing a stout, so it had probably an extra couple of kilos of stuff in it, and it was splashed everywhere. I have only once left a tap open when I started pouring something into this thing, and I only lost a very small amount, so uh, that's good. Uh, Dave, uh, yes, I have accidentally brewed a sour. That was my order that I was just talking about, and it got tipped because it was just awful. Uh, am I going to live stream what, Gavin? I'm I, I'm not planning on being like a live stream guy. I might do bits and pieces from time to time, but this is mostly just, yeah, NBN. Sorry, Vince. <laughs> this is, for now, it's a once-off. I don't know. I don't, uh, there, there's a lot of patience happening inside the house right now with, with uh, one lovely person taking care of tickets and talk well and, and not and not using netflix to calm them down so um <laughs> let's just leave it at that that person plays dog most of the time incidentally i have dog with me there we go 
I should have had in there from the beginning, eh? So how many people are experiencing buffering issues or whatever with me at the moment? Ah, oh, Mick, I'm just catching YouTube or um, I, I'm a regular on the Keepers Forum. You can search for the word boring and you'll find a, a list of my videos on the Keepers Forum. Reach out to me through there, perhaps. Buffering's good. Am I going to brew while we watch? No, I'm not. Because, because it's chaos for the last bit, but yeah. <laughs> I I should have been involved in the local homebrew club actually. Actually on a prize because I think it was a fairly low scoring bunch and one make into second. So that was great. Um I found that the, the people at the awards ceremony were either kind of uh and I say this nicely. I'm not going to say it nicely. They were either sort of bogan larrikins or complete beer anchors, which is, I mean, it was a great bunch of people. Anyway, I'm not trying to say anything about them. <laughs> Add again. Uh, that sucks. Uh, Dave, I'm... Uh, Dave, I'm interested to hear where you're from. Where you're from. Worst mega swill I've tasted? Uh, well, I mean, there's VB, isn't there? I ha I tried an Iron Jack for the sake of it. Um, and I've had Great Northern. Have you seen, you, you might have seen my video recently where I left some out in the sun. Then Great Northern has that ad where it's flowing down a river in the sun. So I might do it again. Yeah. This is hard work just talking to people. I'm enjoying it though because I'm still going. When did this start? Like almost an hour ago. That's crazy. Ah, Perth. And then Sydney. In Buenos Aires, Argentina. Glad you like my tips. They're mostly, um, it's mostly just stuff that I found out along the way. They're mostly, um, it's mostly just stuff that I found out along the way. Ah, oh, Great Northern uses ISO extract, which is light tolerant. Oh, well, there you go. VB Green Death. Yeah, well, you drink Forex in Queensland, don't you? <laughs> so, Queensland, don't you? <laughs> so, how's Argentina handling the crisis that we are here for? Favorite version of Viking, Favorite version of Viking beer? I don't remember. They're, it's all in Roman numerals. I don't remember. They're, it's all in Roman numerals. See, I put I did at the start and I've kept it up. So this is number uh, 100 and... Uh, when I look at it like this, is in mirror writing. Um, that would be 141, I reckon. No, 151. Uh, I think the, I don't know. So before I started the channel, I made a bunch of extract fucking beers and extract fucking beers and, uh, using, um, uh, liquid malt extract. And one of those was actually really, really ridiculously good. Uh, I reckon the one I made with red X was still my favorite. Um, that might've been fucking beer number six or something it was still my favorite. Um, that might have been fucking beer number six or something. Yeah. 
You drink homebrew in Queensland. Good answer. <laughs> yeah, a dirty 30 of VB. We have a dirty 30 of um, West End. Like, <laughs> uh, Total lockdown, only allowed out to buy food and pharmacy. Yeah. Uh, how is is Argentina performing well? I I haven't heard. I've heard a bit about Brazil's eccentric leader. I don't know. I don't know much about Argentina, to be honest. But um, yeah, yeah, the the, <coughs> the Viking beer was a good one as well. Ah, craft beers essential services. That's good to know. Uh, it, it's not a surprise that liquor stores, etc., are still open. What did I, I saw on, I think I saw Tucker Carlson on Fox News comparing church services to liquor stores. And I could see the point he was trying to make, but it also seemed like he was trying very hard to make that point. <laughs> I didn't agree with it. Oh, that's good to hear. Going okay is good. Oh, I've been following that Weldometers website a lot. Um, and and also that Financial Times graph where they show the, the rates and now it's, it's like the rate of new infection and you can see countries starting to come down, which is, which is great. Isn't it such a weird thing? My mum, uh, talking to her in early March, I would say, before serious lockdowns started to happen or maybe it had already happened in Italy, said that... Um, she had lived through changing events. Uh, and then weeks later, she always said that JFK was a big deal as well. So, yeah. And she thought that Princess Di's death was far less important than JFK's death. I don't understand. I would, yeah. She is from Los Angeles. You know, I'm kind of glad that I timed this well enough for the Americas. Uh, I haven't seen many from Europe. Maybe next time I'll... Um, I'll uh, do my stream a different time so that the Europeans can join. If I do another one, I do not keg. I do not have plans to keg. I'd like, I kind of like to because I'd like to build a, a keg fridge or something like that. But because uh, that's one of the great things about homebrew, all the random stuff that you you make. Like for example, I made a temperature controller, and and I don't know, just a bunch of homebrew was a a pretty resourceful bunch i reckon and um it's yeah i don't know there's you can the, the great thing about it is that you can do it really simple you could buy the the generic brand lager and and a kilo of home brand sugar from the supermarket put it together and you got you know drinkable beer or you can go full kawankawi and have a three vessel set up with uh, water, chemistry, and kegerators, and all that as well, and everything in between. So here I am with my um, brew in a bag, which is like the diet version of all grain, but it, it's still grain. <laughs> and it makes just a good beer. Um, but yeah, that, that if if there's one thing I like about homebrew, it is the spectrum of uh, whatever. The spectrum of homebrew. Copyright. No one else can say that. All right. Uh, past midnight here in South Brazil. Time to call it a day. Thanks for watching. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to. Yes, I do. I had one in my beer advent calendar last year, and it was great. No, it wasn't. It was the one that was. It was great, but it was the one where they had the issue. I think it was the one where it was fermenting. It. it something in the canning process kicked off fermenting again and all the cans are going to explode. So we were all instructed to take out our Christmas day beer, which was a, a, an eggnog stout. And um, uh, they said to chuck them in the bin. I think most people put them in the fridge and chuck them the next day. Uh, California. Weed deliveries. <laughs> That's good to know. Uh, do, 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 do. Cakes are all right. You still drink it faster. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I, I'm one of those spreadsheet guys and I keep track of exactly how many beer bottles I've got. And at the moment, I'm desperately low on beer, but that's 
that's for a lot of reasons. Though, anyway. Sweet potato golden stout. You're going to have to tell me more about that. Yeah, homebrew does allow you to try anything you want, which is kind of what I was saying. You can get into electronics, you can get into water, and you can you could or you can just throw two things together, leave it in you know the broom cupboard for a month and put it into bottles and go whatever. What do you mean by gives you complexity uh, when with respect to bottling? Uh, Ryan, I've come close to playing around with water chemistry, but I haven't quite gone that far. But um, if you've seen my Pilsner videos, uh, so the last time I think I made Pilsner, I went to get reverse osmosis water from a, like a vending machine. Uh, and I think it made a difference. So that's the closest I've come to playing with water chemistry, but I haven't ruled it out entirely. You know, um, I'm always looking for something else to do. I'm not always, but I sort of am. But, you know, you, you, you find out things as you go. And you're like, oh, maybe I'll give that a try. Bucket Boys Advent. Oh, really? I did not know. Uh, who are Bucket Boys? I do not know. Have I heard Shadow of the Lord when you pitch to frighten off the spirits of the void of faction? That's definitely going in the next video. Uh, try some more weird shit. Try some more weird shit. Brew this with lime and jalapenos ghosts. <laughs> That's very good. Love Bucket Boys. I don't know who Bucket Boys are, sorry. Am I coming up on an hour on this? Or has it been longer than that? I'm coming up on an hour. Guys, I'm going to call it quits soon because I am just rambling by this point, but it has been... A lot of fun. Uh, I can't believe people are actually tuned in to watch. It's almost humbling. And as I was saying there, very much dense information. And and it, it, was, it was almost frightening. So I thought, oh, and it was boring. And I thought I can do a better job than that. I'll just make quick videos for people that, that don't want to be scared off. And so I did. And now I've got this... Wait, no, it's a baby lizard. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Bottle Shepherd. Where's Marrickville? I wonder if I'm going to watch this back again. When I get on with this, I might watch myself back and cringe a lot. And could this XPA's favorite commercial be? I would say Sparkling Ale. Like, if you're going to call. So I guess some would call Cooper's a commercial brewery. Some wouldn't because it is actually family owned. It's not like a multinational owned thing. Um, yeah. I'm going to run through the everything stat one last time uh, just so that everybody knows what the score is with this thing. The score is two thumbs up because um, – hang on a second. Did you see me look – myself then to see what an idiot I look like. Anyway. The score is two thumbs. It's actually, it's kind of interesting and it's not awful and I, I sort of achieved what I wanted to with this thing. Like, it, it's confusing as hell. <laughs> I, I'm in half, I don't, I don't know if the local brewing competition is going on this year, but I'm sort of half tempted to enter this just to get the reactions from people. You know, it presents really well. It looks like a nice sweet stout. I'd enter it as a sweet stout. So I've, I've just got to, um, I've got 20 minutes to go on that. So I've got to get cracking with preparation for the end uh, chaos. But so, okay. Oak, I could not, I, I couldn't detect the oak in it. Imperial, it does taste strong. So I will give it Imperial tick. Milk, um, it's kind of sweet, and I bit it a fair bit, so I'm going to say yes, it's a milk stout. Oyster stout because of weird sliminess that's going on there. Couldn't detect the smoke. Next is wheat, and I think it, I think the wheat's in there doing its job, but doesn't. It's, it's not like I tried to make a wheat stout. I just put wheat in it and then put that in the name because whatever. 
I'm going to skip the next one. Chocolate. A little bit. Licorice a little bit as well. Um, I think some people, like I've never put star anise or whatever you call it into a beer before. And I think some people thought I put too much in. But it's not overpowering. Oatmeal, uh, can't really tell. Coffee, a little bit. And vanilla. This is a vanilla stout, as it turns out in the end. I'm actually really enjoying the sitting outside today it's kind of a dreary day although the sun's poking through at times and it's good stout drinking weather and this is not bad and i haven't had lunch <laughs> i found my way through what's that like a liter and a half so very good uh, all right catching up on the things uh live tasting do the dance it, it's actually, uh, who said that? Uh, Dibs Online. I do that for a very long time and it actually wears me out. I'm not an unfit guy. I ride my bike a lot. And doing the thumbs at the end of the videos is, I have to do it for a surprisingly long time because of the speed of the videos and all the stuff that I try to cram in at the end. <laughs> if anyone else is ever involved in the videos, like occasionally I've had a friend or, or I've been somewhere and they do it as well, I have to keep telling them, keep going, keep going, keep going. And I do all this stuff and, and sometimes, eh, yeah, anyway. Uh, Stein lager for consistency of a good lager. Okay, Stein lager. Don't forget Canada. I went to my my sister-in-law married a Canadian recently on and the next day they all got a message to say go home because of the virus so that's how recently it was although was that a long time ago and like is is July a long time away I, I don't even know anymore but um uh I I don't forget Canada four pines pale Ryan try and Smash pile. Uh, smoked cherry wood malt was strong. I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, I must have missed some comments. What's next step in this brew? Um, it is. It is 45 minutes into the boil, so uh, my plan is to throw in a little bit of galaxy at flame out, and then a little bit more, more um, Q pop. So I've got to sanitize my pack and stuff. I'm running out of time to do that kind of thing. And um, uh, yeah, it goes in the kib. And then up into the shed. And maybe tomorrow or the day after, I'll put it in the fermenter. And I'm using Nottingham yeast. You're drinking sour too. That's great, Dibs. Uh, <laughs> I did brewery cooked that one. Very good. Is it named after Charles Darwin? Like, I think actual Darwin, uh, actual Darwin. I think Australia's Darwin is named after Charles Darwin. Do my neighbours drink my homebrew? No, they don't drink a lot. I would kind of like to share with them, but they don't drink a lot, so I don't. I don't push the point. Um, have I noticed? I've never tried Nottingham and SO4 side by side um yeah actually so i've got my brew fridge which can hold a certain number of fermenters i should try I sh doing a, a, a yeast experiment would be a really good idea at least with a bunch of different ale yeasts so i could try say nottingham uh, uso5 which i always use maybe um what is it? 180 something, the slow starter. And M84. Compare them. See if I can tell the difference. I really do like experimenting that. That's also one of the great things about homebrew. Like com comparing and seeing what's what. 
golden hours used to be my standard for trying. Um, I, back when I was extract brewing a lot, I tried all the different hops with golden hours. I've made so many golden hours, it's ridiculous. So, yeah, I can't say if I've noticed much difference between Nottingham and SO4 because I haven't tried them side by side. And, and I never do the same thing twice. Well, I almost, I do similar things a lot, but I, I've maybe, oh, I can't even remember. I don't think I've ever brewed exactly the same thing twice. Has anyone, has anyone here got something that they always do? Top five beers of all time. But that's your old man. Of course he's going to say that. My mum said that my beer was the best beer that she's ever had because it was the first beer that she'd ever had. Mash, boil, no chill, fermenting, bottling. That's how it goes. Yeah. All right. I'm going to sit here for a bit and then maybe end this. I'm going to let Max back out. So, Chris, didn't Kristen, Chris, <laughs> what is, I make the second best beer. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> what is, I make the second best beer. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kai. Um, uh, what is your totally your own recipe, Kristen? I'd, I'd like to know what type of beer it is. Hey, if you want me to make it, I'll make it. Get in touch somehow. Can I do a full tour of your whole setup? Oh, yeah. When you asked that before, it was raining, and I did want to take the the um, laptop out into the rain. Um, yeah, sure. Why not? Let me... Uh, it, it's all stashed away in all different places in the house, so... Um, uh, it, it's a bit hard to do a full brewery tour, but I'll do a little walk around as the last thing I do. Cream ale. What makes a cream ale? I've never even made one before. Oh, one of my videos. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have considered that. Several times. Um, and it's only getting easier because the more kids we keep having, the more my stuff winds up in the shed at the top there. Max is back. I, I've done an evolution of a, a brewer video before, which shows the, a lot of the stuff I used, but I, I kind of want to do an every piece of stuff I own thing. Like these are the a lot of the stuff I used, but I, I kind of want to do an every piece of stuff I own thing. Like these are my thermometers. which I keep in a box. So this one was completely cactus and it doesn't work anymore. And it did me good for a long time, but I guess I can get rid of that one. Um, this is my, oh, hang on. This one here was one, oh, that last one, I, I went through maybe three of those that kept breaking. This was one that I got from the supermarket, which is like a meat thermometer. I, I think they're all meat thermometers, but um, it, I, I don't know. It was slow and I never really liked it. Something went beep. These are some old tiny dial ones that I used to use and I, I still do occasionally if I'm doing something on the stove. Or well, then, not, not that one. Eh. Um, this is my remote thermometer that has an alarm. So that's that's the probe. And this has an alarm that you just can't stop. It's, it's great for when so I use this uh, when stuff is coming up to the boil. 
good for that. But it, other than that, it's just annoying. <laughs> this thermometer is pretty good, but it's a oh, and it's on. It's a little bit slow, and it comes. Oh, it's yeah, it's kind of a little bit broken because it keeps turning itself on. But anyway, it's a little bit slow, and it skips from like sixty-seven to seven. 72, which is the temperature range that I'm usually really interested in. So I usually only use this to see when things are coming up to the boil. And you, you notice that I hook it over my, what's it there? And this is my good thermometer that I use if I really want to know the temperature of something. And this is a, what do you call it? pH meter that I've never used. Flight corner rice. No. Video two would be great. All right. I do. I have a thing at work called Eight Day, um, which happens every six months, and it's basically everyone brings food to share, and and then there's a bit of a competition. And you, yeah. I always try and make something beer related, and then I make a video out of that. But other than that, I'd mostly just make bulk meals for myself. Ah. I'm going to have to go 12 litre batch. I can do that. Magnum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Kristen. Um, find me on the Cooper's forum and I'll make, I'll make your cream out. Yeah, this pH meter was a real cheapy and it came busted. Well, the, the um, what do you call it? It comes with like some little sachets of, of stuff to calibrate it and one of them was burst open so I never use it that's again getting into the, the wankery of water chemistry I've come close but not quite anyway I've got only a few minutes left on the boil here and I need to do some stuff, so I'm going to call it quits, guys. But thank you very much. I can't believe that there's people watching. Very much. I can't believe that there's people watching this. It's ridiculous. And this, it's ridiculous. I hope you're all enjoying isolation. Uh, the end of those comments. Jano, how you been, mate? I've been good. Time for a uh, we spin. It possibly is. Anyway. Should I do? Yeah, let's do it. 